Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Silicon Valley Innovation Center interview. I'm your host, Raheem Rahim Tula. And joining me today is Casper Tribler, the CEO and uh, at SIO Plus. Uh, and Casper, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. And we're talking today uh, with you about uh, the digital transformation of agriculture. Uh, so, Casper, let's just start right there. Tell us about uh, what is it that digital, digital technologies, digital tools are making possible um, in, in the food production business, in agriculture? What are the new things now that they're, they're letting farmers do that we haven't been able to do in the past? Okay, so first of all, um, if you look at the studies available out there, um, latest one uh, made by Howard Business Review, and you look at the agriculture industry compared to other industries, you will see that this industry is actually uh, the least digital uh, of, of most others, where the, the most digital is the telecom industry, uh, maybe not so surprisingly. So, I mean, there is a lot of opportunity in this uh, industry of agriculture to uh, create value by using data science, uh, big data analytics. Um, most of the things that we see at the moment is related to, I would say, socioeconomic uh, benefits. I mean, there's a lot of uh, major uh, opportunities that comes with the way the world is uh, growing in population and also the increasing buying power uh, that will increase by uh, 100% uh, until 2050. Um, but also the consu consumers uh, the, the change basically uh, their behavior and uh, also their requirements to, for example, the quality of the food that they eat. Uh, of course, it has to be fresh and healthy, but also, of course, uh, requirements to uh, using less uh, medication. We all talk about antibiotics uh, these days, um, but they're also concerned about the environment. Uh, what is water used for uh, to growing the feed for the animals, for example, or basically water consumption by uh, the, the animals that we produce for protein cons consumption, uh, greenhouse gases. And so, so there's a lot of socioeconomic uh, drivers that are pushing the industry to perform better uh, creating, uh, have to create more uh, food for the human population. We're talking about maybe 70% more within 2050, but only by using 5% uh, more land that we are using today. So these kind of challenges we're talking about here are, of course, opportunities for everyone to make more money, but it's uh, definitely something that will require uh, digitalization in the industry to solve uh, and, and basically to get benefits of these opportunities. Yeah, so and digital then can <clears throat> can help you, yeah, like you say, to, to, to reach these, you know, high goals to be able to produce more food and do it in a more sustainable way and an environmentally friendly way. It's obviously a very challenging uh, prospect. But, you know, what are the digital tools then that we talk about? You know, I read about ag tech and a lot of the time I see, okay, you know, robotics, uh, maybe having autonomous tractors in the field, maybe having, you know, a lot of Internet of Things enabled devices, a lot of sensors out there collecting data on what's going on, you know, soil health, water levels, uh, temperature, uh, a lot about imagery, drones, drones capturing a lot of, you know, imagery and then analyzing that. I mean, I'm just giving some examples here. Are those the sorts of things uh, which, which you see as, as having an impact going forward? Uh, definitely. And, and what we also see is that within the agriculture business, you will find different maturity levels of digitalization. For example, looking at uh, agriculture and crop uh, harvesting, uh, robots are already there, self-driven uh, machinery is there co connected to satellites. Um, so pretty much uh, going into more advanced technologies, you have uh, dairy, uh, cow uh, uh, products, and there you also you deal with more fresh products. So they are very much far on analyzing basically uh, the, the fresh and the, basically the quality of the milk. Um, but then also you have uh, industries like uh, broiler uh, or chicken production, pig uh, and egg production to, uh, for, for the table. And uh, these industries are, are known for not being that specifically uh, well uh, 
digitalized yet. So you find uh, various stages, but definitely uh, there are a great opportunity in the more advanced technologies. But more of what you see is that what we need to move into is uh, at this stage is more into data collections, more into the big data part of uh, getting access to good quality data. And uh, because only after that you can start with the more advanced data science analytics on the data and then you can create the solutions that uh, add value. Uh, but then one thing that I think we don't talk enough about is uh, to get to the level of getting these new technologies out there, uh, there is a general lack of digital leadership in the agriculture uh, industry compared to other industries and um, dig digitalization is driven by people and not technology and uh, studies show that it has to come from the management level uh, and it doesn't often grow up from from the ground so I mean more uh, investing into digital leadership uh, is important for for the agriculture business and I read one I read one statistic maybe this is related um, which said that, you know, generally speaking, um, when we look at the farming workforce, it tends to be an older workforce. Um, and is that possibly tied in? And, and therefore, you know, the, the argument of this particular report was that, therefore, digital skills, and perhaps this is also, you know, digital leadership was not particularly high. And they sort of related this to the idea of, of there being an older workforce. Um, I mean, is that, is, that, is that what you mean as well? Is that the people who are in farming now and agribusiness um, have been there for a long time and, and they're not necessarily up to speed with with all the changes Yeah, you see uh, I, I travel a lot in Asia uh, also Europe uh, Africa and Middle East and talk to uh, major integrators um, and huge companies and they um, uh, The management level there are and some of some of these are family-owned businesses and they're very successful making very good money um, digitalization is not very high on their priority list because they're actually doing quite well. Um, but uh, there, there are definitely uh, challenges with, uh, with, with the workforce. And, and, but you see where the next generation comes in, they are much more uh, willing to adapt to new technologies and, and basically take the benefits of what that can bring to, to the business to bring them to the next uh, level. But that includes, of course, um, not only that the leadership gets the digital understanding but they have to invest in their workforce and um, and create the infrastructure to make data flow but also make thing, uh, people think differently um, that that's definitely one of the, the the main parts but also i mean let's talk more action they need to invest into big data analytics solutions uh, internet of things i mean having sensors out in the farm uh, building the infrastructure to collect the data and build also the, the systems to to analyze and bring forward what we call actionable insights. I mean, something that you can actually look at and will help you take take the right decisions. So, um, uh, but it is it starts with the management level, yes, and it's uh, there are some generation changes going on in many of these uh, old, also very successful companies. And so, Casper, if you know, we were to find a group of, you know, tech savvy entrepreneurs, part of this, you know, a newer generation, graduates from, um, say, you know, Harvard Business School or somewhere like this, you know, Berkeley. And, and you know, they, they had all the, you know, they had all the tech and all the ideas. And then they built a digital farm, say, today. I mean, is that going to look radically different from the farms that we have now? I mean, are we going to, is it simply more robots or, you know, how different would that look today if we really built from scratch a, you know, a technologically, you know, digital first farm? It would look uh, dramatically different because what, what we are, what I experience is there are many legacy houses out there and, um, and also the, the, it has gone through gener basic generations of different technologies. So it's not very aligned and it's basically very difficult to, to, uh, to, to get a common uh, big data analytics platform using this kind of uh, infrastructure. So yes, uh, first of all, I mean, uh, it starts from uh, building up the, the farm itself, having a very strong, robust uh, data collection infrastructure, automated uh, data collection, and of course, everything from uh, feed layers, water consumption, temperature, humidity, 
Uh, everything that basically tells you something about the environment that the animals are in, if we talk about uh, uh, chicken, pig, and cow production, for example. Or, mm -hmm. um, so uh, the whole data collection part, of course, very, very important. Um, but the, what I also see is that the industry in many places lack even, the, for example, a cloud infrastructure to... to uh, to store the data, to uh, analyze the data it doesn't exist. You would be surprised how many that are running uh, major uh, businesses today in this industry just on Excel sheets. And it's actually mm. quite common. Um, and of course, the last part is to, to, I mean, you have to think about the end goal. You have to think about the user story. What pain are you trying to solve here for, for the client? So. If I were uh, having to face this kind of opportunity, and then, then I would always start with the end. What am I trying to solve here? Uh, the technology itself is not that important. Uh, you, you have to find out, first of all, where, 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 the, where the value is for, the, for your client, and then you select the technology based on that. But definitely big data part, infrastructure important, the data science on top of that. And then you build the solutions to create those insights that are needed to create value. Sure. And so, and so when you say, you know, you start from the start from the end in, in a sense, you know, from the value part that, that comes out. I mean, when you when you do that, um, when, you know, when companies see, you know, the value that it does create, that surely is that probably, you know, that's the best argument for digitalization. Is it, is it not that when they sort of see that the results that the things that they can achieve, you know, using these technologies, using these techniques, um, you know, it's going to be hard for them to, you know, go against that. Absolutely. But what I also experience is that, I mean, it, it, it is of, of course about uh, money. I mean, they, whatever they, they are willing to invest if they can get a good return on, on their investment. Uh, and honestly, they're not that, you know, interested in the technology part, but, uh, when you talk their language, and uh, this is the most important part of digitalization and data science, that is the domain expertise and the business knowledge. When you meet the client on, on their terms, talk their, their language and understand how to optimize their business, then you are a good step ahead to, to win the trust. And then you bring in the computer science, IT and statistics, the mathematics skills after that to to basically provide the, the solution that uh, that is needed to create that that value. So um, yeah. And uh, when you have all that data, I mean, is it a given that you know what to do with it? I mean, is it all you know? Is that the farmer, for example? Is that is that your expertise then? Is that you know you know because you have all this data which potentially you've never had before. So how do you you know how do you even know what to optimize for or which variable to adjust to you know to get a get a better outcome? Is there a process there of, of trial and error or how does it work? Yeah. So first of all, in the, we have uh, hired uh, specialists that understand how to basically uh, grow chicken or pigs or uh, create uh, good quality uh, protein eggs. So they understand uh, what the challenges are out in the real world. They uh, first of all have a look at the data sets, uh, data quality, the volume, the velocity, the variety is a big challenge. So, so we spend quite a lot of time of our data science exploration and just going through data and sorting it out and make sense of it uh, before we actually give it to, to the data scientists after that. So yeah, there is a process for it. Uh, but since we have the experience of understanding the client's business, we also know what kind of questions uh, to raise. Uh, so let, let's say I want to predict uh, the slaughter weight of a chicken, uh, say, uh, four weeks before it goes to the slaughtery. We already have a number of parameters that we have identified that can help us predict such uh, end value with a certain precision. Uh, so, so we will go in with a client and basically do some sort of uh, consultancy selling. So we are in there, we are basically taking the client in the hand and say, okay, if you provide us with this data, we can more or less guarantee you this result. Just, you know, uh, follow us and, and we will we'll provide the solution for you. But it, of course, comes with a lot of hard work and, and, uh, and experience in working with, with many clients 
but definitely hiring the right people. Whenever you do these kind of data science projects, make sure one of the first people you hire is a domain expert, somebody that understands the business and don't necessarily understand data. Mm, very interesting. And, and, and Casper, what, on a sort of industry level, one thing I, I read about ag tech is that one of the difficulties and you know, going forward, especially this will be important, is to have interoperability um, in a number of ways. I mean, between you know, legacy technologies and new technologies, because farming technologies don't get updated that often. So they need to be able to work together. But also you talk a lot about using data and having to just sort it out, clean it up before you can actually start to analyze it. And it seems that the data that you get, you know, it, it varies, you know, everywhere. No, there isn't necessarily the, the you know, the platforms, the standards um, of, of data to, to work with. And that seems to be, you know, a challenge for, for the industry um, going forward. It is, it is a great challenge. And um, we, so what, how, how can you, I mean, first of all, you will have to talk to the client, analyze what they have. They have ERP systems or different kind of sensor technology for very uh, uh, third party providers. And then you start to have a look at what you're dealing with. Um, and uh, in most cases, you're able to somehow uh, convert that information into our own internal data format and work with it. But in some cases as well, you just have to admit that this is not going to work. We have to actually put out a new mesh of data collection infrastructure. So um, we're also working with partners that has various controllers and IoT boxes that you can put up uh, at the client sites and then roll out new new sensors that can then uh, give you the, uh, the, the the data quality that you need when it comes to uh, getting it fast enough to do the predictions that you need and get basically the variety in, in there and consistent data. Uh, so um, it, is, it is a big challenge. And uh, I, I see that you actually, in some cases, have to basically roll out a completely new type of data collection infrastructure. Mm. And Casper, we're, we're almost out of out of time, I think. So I think maybe we'll just we'll just wrap up on on, on this one. So what is your what is your feeling then? You know, you say that in many ways agriculture is still not terribly mature. You know, in terms of its digitalization. Um, you know, how long do you think it's going to take, or how do you see it happening? Where you get to that point where you do just have these you know deep, rich historical data sets. That you need that are going to be you know going to enable you to make really good predictions you know very quickly uh, it seems like you know how far do you feel you are away from from that I, it's going to take some time and i come actually my career started in the telecom industry so uh, I'm, I'm used to a completely different level of digitalization um, but you know there there is a there are different phases to go through Right now, the industry is very much focused on analyzing the past and the present. What I mean by that is that you can get access to ERP systems and, and understand uh, historically what has happened in the business and try to, to teach the client something about how they can optimize their business based on past performance. Uh, the, the present is also something that is opening up right now. So that is video, uh, various kind of uh, sound uh, technologies, robotics that goes out there and collect data on living or current crops that are being produced. Uh, so you have a chance uh, here now to do something to optimize the outcome of, of your current investment. But of course, um, as, as we go along, I think the industry will be uh, more mature to look into the future, predicting basically uh, what's going to happen and, uh, and even come up with suggestions how you can do things uh, uh, more, more efficient. Uh, so, but you know, it's it's all about starting uh, with collecting data, getting access to good quality data, and um, and it will come. And I think one of the main uh, arguments why we will see uh, companies invest more in in uh, in data infrastructure and also third-party solution providers will go in and and create common data exchange platforms and APIs are from the retail uh, segment. I mean, the big players in the industry like McDonald and Target, uh, they, they, they all want more transparency so they can, you know, guarantee a good product for their, their clients. And I think we'll see it's already happening today and we'll see it more and more that uh, the, the consumers through the big uh, retail 
uh, companies, they will push the industry to um, to get more digitalized. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. That's uh, very interesting, Catherine. Very interesting insight, a little sneak preview, as it were, into uh, into where things are going uh, today in uh, in ag tech. Uh, so uh, that's, I think, where we'll have to leave it on, on that note, though. But uh, thank you so much for, for joining us today on, on the program. Thank you very much for the invitation. And to our audience, uh, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed my interview today with Casper uh, Tribler. Uh, do remember, if you'd like to see more of our expert, expert talks just like this one, you can uh, do that at our website, siliconvalley.center. Um, you can also find out there about the executive immersion programs we run. So if you'd like to find out more about the uh, topics that I've discussed today with Casper, uh, then uh, do check out our website to find out uh, where you can learn more. Um, but uh, I think for, for today, that's where we'll wrap things up. So uh, just uh, many thanks to my guest today, Casper Tribbler, the CEO at Sio Plus. And uh, we'll see you again very soon. All right. Goodbye.